All right, I'd like to introduce you to PowerWF Studio. Uh, in the center, uh, the biggest window is the canvas. On the left side is the toolbox. On the right side are the properties, uh, as well as tracking, tasks, outline, and help. And uh, ribbon bar at the top and output at the bottom. And I've uh, created a new workflow called Hello. And I'm going to make a simple Hello World. Uh, over here in the toolbox, uh, all the activities are categorized. Uh, so uh, if you want a network activity, you can find it under the network category, and each of these guys is an activity. Uh, if we couldn't, if you had trouble finding uh, something, you could use the search. So if I was looking for a console output, I can type console. And of course, you can see it's got uh, a description and a category where you can find it and what the activity is. So I can just drag that activity over here to the to the canvas. Just hit the red X to go back to this view again. Uh, that was in the visualiz visualization category. So I've got this console output activity and it's going to take some input. It's got a format. It's got an output. So let's give it an input of hello world and hit play. The workflow is compiled. It's run and the output can be seen down here in the output window. Very, very simple, hello world. Uh, which is not all that impressive, but it is a hello world. Let's deploy that as a console application. So we've compiled it and run it within our application, but let's deploy it to a console app. So we hit the console button over under the deploy menu. We hit build. And we have execute after build checked, so we see this right here. So again, we can run hello.exe, copy that somewhere else and run it there, but hello world. So let's get out of there. Let's take this up a notch, and instead of having a hard-coded thing here, let's take user input. So to take user input, we need to parameterize these these parameters. We need to um, tell the workflow that these are parameters that we want to gather from the command line or send back out to the command line uh, explicitly. So we'll go to parameters, and we'll select the activity, uh, the only activity we have, and let's take that input parameter, which has been named input1, and mark it as an actual input parameter to take data from the command line. And we'll alias it just to make it easy on our users not to have to type long words if they want to explicitly uh, set that parameter. We'll even give them the little help text. This is help text. And you'll see that later on the command line. All right. So we have an input parameter. And we'll say OK. So let's deploy this as a console app and see what the difference is. All right, so now if we run hello with nothing, we get nothing. If we ha type hello and then give it a command line argument, then what we get is that command line argument printed out to the screen. So in fact, we can look at the usage and see that all of our parameters that are that were uh, that we we bound in that parameters dialog are listed here under parameters. So we could explicitly set that parameter by saying dash input, which is the parameter name in this case. Uh, or, because it's uh, a one-to-one -one mapping between the number of arguments that I'm passing in and the actual parameters, we could just type uh, right there in the command line. So now we've created a console app. It's a hello world. It's very simple. And you can see, again, that the tools are on the left side. You can drag and drop anything uh, from the left side onto the canvas. And the properties for those activities are over here on the right side under the properties tab. And the actions are up here on the menu. Thanks for watching.